Hey everybody, Josh RV Nerd here at Halid RV of Coldwater, Michigan. And I think I've got a good one for you here today. We're gonna to be comparing head to head the Forest River Wildwood with the Jayco J Flight. We're gonna kind of see what makes them tick, uh, sort of compare features between the two, maybe give a nod one direction or the other. And then along the way, I'd really love you folks to chime in and let us know what you like about each brand, maybe what you would like to change. And which one do you think you'd give your business to? So right off the bat, one of the big ones, pricing. From just a pure price perspective, typically speaking, the Wildwood is going to run you a few bucks less. There might be some reasons for it, but again, we're going to kind of go through and examine all those things along the way. Now, another big hitter topic, peace of mind, assurance. When we start talking about that, frankly, there's nobody that's going to beat Jayco's warranty. They have double the warranty of any industry standard offering out there in addition to their three-year structural coverage. So some brands have uh, a two-year limited warranty. Some have a three-year structural. Jayco does both. They do it all, so there's no question. If you're looking for the greatest peace of mind possible, this is where you find it. So how are these things built? Well, <laughs> the answer is extremely similarly. There is not a huge variance between most trailers built within this category. Now, there are some. Uh, whether, interestingly, we're talking about Cherokee, Wildwood, Catalina, or J-Flight here at Halo RV, what I'm about to share uh, pretty much applies to all of them. They have a 5 8 tongue and groove plywood floor deck. They all ride on an LCI chassis, a, a lipper frame chassis, for which they all do their own engineering. Um, they all have the same on-center floor, wall, and roof studs. The only significant variance in construction is that when we start looking at a J-Flight, whether it's a full J-Flight or an SLX, you will have uh, 3 8 plywood roof decking versus 3 8 OSB roof decking. Now, these are all walkable roofing. Everything that you're seeing here behind me, that is not a question whatsoever. However, when we get to the uh, J-Flights, they will hold about 50% more weight than the next brand. Well. That means that they're rated for like 42 to 4,800 pounds. It's phenomenal. No one else, no one else touches it. But here's the thing. That means that this Wildwood is still rated for like 2,800 pounds on the roof. So there's an argument to be made there that says, are you telling me that 2,800 pounds is not enough? Because most people are going to agree that 2,800 pounds is enough. I don't know that I disagree with that. So the argument to be made is that the J flight is overbuilt in some ways. So what some brands have done is they followed a lot of the things that have made the J flight the number one selling series of travel trailers since 2005 and counting. And they've kind of uh, said, okay, we're gonna move those dollars out of that roof or out of that extended uh, two plus three year warranty and we're going to move those dollars into things that people can see, feel, and touch, or we're just simply going to save the customer that money. I don't know that either method is the wrong mindset. I, there's going to be just as many people who say, there's no such thing as being overbuilt. Well, I agree with that too. And that is why we carry different products at Halo RV. That's why we carry these different offerings because the answer here is not always very clear, and sometimes it is very subjective, and we always try to give you at least an A, B option, and in this class, we've got four different options. We'll try to get some more comparisons for those as we go. Today, we're just looking at Flight and Wildwood. Now, there is a little bit more than just a plywood versus an OSB roof deck difference between a J Flight and a Wildwood. One of the other differences is going to be the uh, eight inch micro laminated header beam that goes above a slide out in any J Flight. Basically, it's thicker, heavier, stronger. It extends further past the slide out to give this whole thing more support. And the idea there is that over time, it is possible for the area of sidewall above a slide out to kind of bow and buckle down. Older Springdales, not current Springdales, but older Springdales actually had issues with that because they just had a two by six above that slide out. It would hold up fine for six to eight years, but over time it would really start to buckle due to the stress uh, uh, that the whole thing has to undergo with all the weight that's involved. Um, Jake always made sure that they avoided that occurrence. Now, the header beam above a Wildwood is certainly not insufficient. We don't have structural issues with Wildwoods around here. So again, 
It's the idea of are you looking for more peace of mind or would you like to shift that budget to somewhere else? And that will be a lot of the frequent debate between a J flight and a Wildwood, I think. Now, along the lines of peace of mind, uh, one of the, <laughs> I'm right up here by the road, so hopefully I don't get clipped. I hope you appreciate it. I do my own stunts. Um, <laughs> but uh, along the line of peace of mind factors, one of those I, I kind of qualify as safety systems. And I don't mean the smoke detectors and the CO detectors. Those are required objects for any RV produced out there. What I'm getting at are what are the extra things that a brand has done, if they've done any, and I've never seen a brand do more typically than Jayco seems to do. So first of all, back here, we've got the J Smart lighting system. You see these extra upper clearance lights up here? Those lights and all of the associated side marker lights will blink along with that little tail light right there. And that will give other drivers on the road, just like a semi-tractor trailer, a clear understanding of what you're doing. Plus in the taillights of these J flights, they also have a white uh, LED backup light that is very aggressive, like it, it burn, burn your retinas kind of brightness so that anybody can see when you're backing up, which is I think obviously a very good thing for other motorists or pedestrians even to understand. Then additionally, the Goodyear Endurance radials that Jayco's doing here, there's nobody else in this class and category doing it. And frankly, there was nobody else doing it for a long time. The reason Goodyear's have become very popular in the RV industry again is Jayco. They're making it happen. So these tires are rated for more speed with a uh, greater sidewall integrity rating. But this kind of leads us into another little debate. And that is the concept of China bomb tires. That is just not a thing anymore. Um, that certainly was the case in the RV industry for a while. There certainly were a lot of underrated, underqualified tires being used because manufacturers could save a buck. And sadly, the average consumer still does not know, nor do they seem to truly appreciate things like differences in tires or suspension treatments. But um, RVIA, the governing body over like uh, the RV industry, they put out some uh, new guidelines uh, recently here that in order for something to be qualified as an RV, they had to make sure that their tires exceeded the GVW, meaning the dry weight plus max capacity of the camper by at least 10%. So there's no more of these underrated bias plies. There were literally some companies years ago using recycled tires. I am very glad that we never did any business like that here at Halet RV, but I know it was out there. Um, what I'm getting at though, is the tires on this Wildwood are certainly once again, not insufficient by any means. And here's the thing guys, for a casual user like me, I have 100% confidence in something like, I, I don't have any concerns about the tires being used on a brand like a Wildwood or Cherokee or Catalina, something other than those Goodyear radials, because I know that they are uh, meeting the, uh, the weight requirements for RVIA code. And that Goodyear tire might be rated for 87 miles an hour. I ain't gonna tow 87 miles an hour, and I sure hope you're not doing that either. That's just a recipe for disaster. That's not a way to maintain safe control. It's obviously illegal for a number of reasons, just pure, uh, you know, exceeding speed limits and whatnot. At most, I'm towing 65. These tires are rated for that. So anything that a, re a person is going to reasonably throw at these tires, they're gonna handle it. I like the feeling, the peace of mind of the Goodyear's, there's nothing wrong with these things either, guys. Now, in terms of curb appeal, I don't really give the advantage either way. I think that J Flight looks pretty good, and I think that Wildwood looks pretty good. Cool fact, I was actually able to offer some dealer input when Wildwood is going through several different exterior color schemes. So if you like the way they look, tell me I did a good job. And if you don't, um, well, I, I failed. <laughs> and here's the reason I like both of them. The three most common colors of vehicles purchased in North America are white, black, silver. And both of these RVs look very good if you have a white, black, or silver vehicle. So maybe you like the swooshes on one, you like the lines on the other, that's subjective. I would love to know. Tell us, which one do you think looks better? Personally, I think they both look good and I don't give an advantage one way or the other there. So let's start talking like exterior equipment here. And some of this is going to be some, some real nitpicky stuff, 
because frankly, folks, both of these brands are really on top of their game right now. J Flight and Wildwood are both awesome, awesome trailers. I would not hesitate to camp in either of them myself. If my aunt came in, the one that I like, <laughs> I, would, I would still be willing to put her in either of these products. I feel very confident in both of them. Um, we've had our own employees test demo both brands both came back saying man i really like this i really like this they both have some really excellent features i'm very glad that we get to offer them both here at halo rv but what am i getting at here well right up front a j flight has an integrated a-frame and that's a cool thing because both of these rvs are six foot nine inside so that's a wash but the j flight has a lower floor uh, and that's accomplished by this integrated A-frame. What that lets you do is maintain a slightly lower center of towing gravity. Um, they both have roughly the same ground clearance and things like that, so that's not an issue. The um, windows, a J-Flight will have uh, dark UV tinted windows, standard from the factory, and they also have all uh, LED tail and marker lights. Those are all specific qualities I wanna point out. Now where it gets a little murky is when we start talking about optional equipment because like you can see that this has those um, stable steps right there. Well that's going to be standard on a Wildwood but optional on a Jayco. Couple more quick notes for you here. J Flights, not an SLX, we're talking a full J Flight in this comparison here. They have 30 pound propane tanks, just kind of log that in memory bank. And if you're looking down the sidewall of the trailer you can also see where it has um, a uh, black tank flush and outside utility shower. Plus, all of the windows open for airflow on these. J Flights also have a standard roof solar prep plug, and it is basically pre-wired to install a charge controller inside. Again, hold on to that for just a moment. So what's different over here in the Wildwood? Well, um, first of all, right up front, they have a thicker, uh, smooth aluminum nose skin. It is two thirds thicker on the nose. Now. It needs to be because it is smooth. If you remember, J Flight is using uh, a Mesa crimp aluminum on the nose, which has just always been one of their signature calling cards here. That's a 0.024 inch thickness, whereas the nose on this thing is a 0.04 thickness. Um, that's, that's a big difference in thickness. Now, the thing is the crimp on the J Flight nose is where some of its strength is coming from, whereas the thickness on this skin is where it's coming from. So little difference there. Um, Wildwood uses traditional incandescent uh, like marker lights. They don't tend to use a lot of LED lights there. Um, the, they use 20 pound tanks instead of 30s. Now there's advantages both ways. 30 pound tanks will give you more time between refills and RVs don't use the amount of propane I think people think they do unless you're really chugging that furnace. Um, but the uh, uh, 20 pound tanks are easier to exchange, especially if it's like a Sunday or it's after hours. You can just, if you have to, you can just go to a gas station and keep your furnace running or do some grilling or whatever you know you, you have there. Now Wildwood Standard does not have an outside shower. That's actually an optional piece of equipment on these. Interestingly, it's one that we don't get a lot of call for at Halo RV. I have always been a little bit surprised by that myself. It's a feature that I, it's not on the camper that I usually camp in, but I sure would like it. But you know, at the same time, I guess it's not a deal breaker. They do have a black flush. I don't know if I mentioned that, but I mean, remember too though, like the J Flight didn't have the stable step standard. So I think it is fair to, to consider options in the mix. They are both prepped for slide awnings. Their windows, they handle significantly differently though. Wildwood does not tint their windows. The idea being it lets in more light in the RV when you want it, but you can pull that blackout shade down to block out all the sun when you don't. And that makes sense to me. Then again, I like the tinted windows on the J Flight because I feel like I'm getting more privacy. It helps keep my camper cooler all the time. Um, and I can turn the lights on when I want more light. So, I mean, I feel like they're both totally viable and they've just accomplished it in a different way. Now, the slide side windows on a Wildwood do open for airflow, but you might notice the exterior sidewall windows on the Wildwood do not. But at the same time, it also makes that thing just give you this awesome panoramic view of your destination. So they, again, they just do it differently. I don't know that one is better than the other in this regard, they just do it differently. Similarly, I like different parts of what they're doing in, around the, the underbelly area as well. So a J Flight right here has the option for an enclosed heated underbelly. It is insulated. They add a radiant barrier to the slide floor and the roof. 
But that is all optional. That is all part of the J-Flight thermal package. The thing is, you're going to be really hard pressed to find one of these without the J-Flight thermal package. And I do feel it does offer best in class protection. Here's, here's kind of the trick though, ladies and gentlemen. They have never actually cold chambered and tested one of these. So the best I can tell you is that it's a good extended season RV as compared to its uh, laminated cousin, the White Hawk or Eagle or something like that, which are proven hot cold camp like zero to 100 plus rated uh, RVs. Now the Wildwood underbelly standard is enclosed and heated. You don't have to option anything to get that out of these. Now that is a difference between X-Lite and full Wildwood, but that's an entirely different story for an entirely different day as they would say in Winnie the Pooh. Um, so out of the box, the standard build, Wildwood does offer more protection in the underbelly. Um, it can be argued that J flights have a better seasonal package, but I don't know that they necessarily can be option to have better protection because the thing is this, what is called the Wildwood accessibility, which I love that name. You're noticing how it has a different material enclosing it. These are like eight foot long molded sheets that are basically like underbelly shields that go into this thing from the front to the back. And what that is doing for us here is offering better impact resistance. Another thing that it is going to do is give superior serviceability versus a uh, like corrugated underbelly enclosure. So if you had to have work on this underbelly, I, I hope it never happens, but if you did, each of these panels can individually be dropped and then placed back up. This is literally something that Wildwood looked at Forest River's luxury fifth wheels and went, oh yeah, we could do that and jumped right on board. Um, so if you had to get to a plumbing fixture or a slide motor or something, you'd never see that any work was done when you were done with it. In a G flight and frankly in most underbelly enclosed travel trailers, the only thing you can really do is take a Stanley knife and cut out a chunk of it and then uh, to create an access panel and then, um, you know, basically tape it back up. Now, you could drop the entire underbelly and then put it back up, but that is very time consuming and labor costly. So the Wildwood is faster, easier to work on and gives a little bit better impact protection. Could be argued that the J Flight has better seasonal coverage, but there's not a whole lot of evidence and testing to actually prove to that. So which one's better? I don't know, you tell me. However, there is something Wildwood's doing here that I don't believe any brand in this class does better. I'm not sure there's really anyone in the industry that really can do it better, uh, even in big fifth wheels. And that is the way that they improve your campsite stability. So like if you're a little bit of a, a motion sick, motion sensitive person, if it bothers you, if you don't have your sea legs, when the kids or other people are moving around the RV, if it shifts a little bit and that kind of makes you go well, I don't know that there's a better option for you out there than Wildwood. So we've already established that they have those stable steps standard from the factory. You don't have to option those on. So that helps a great deal. Secondly, is this banana yellow job over here that connects the stabilizer to the chassis. It's called a JT strong arm stabilizer. And they are awesome. They are, they live up to all of the hype and maybe then some. We've carried a lot of different brands of RVs here at Halo RV over the years. Some of which were some big giant fifth wheels. Um, the uh, thing is they, they had these same kind of stabilizer bars on them and cranking down even one of them would take almost all of the wiggle and the jiggle out of the RV. And this RV has four of them from the factory. So between the steps and the stabilizer bars, I don't know that there's anyone more stable. And yet another thing Wildwood's doing here that is very easy to miss is that their scissor jacks are, are stabilizer jacks they are rated for more weight than most anybody else in this class. Well, if it's rated for more weight, then it basically can uh, uh, you know, provide more stability. You can tighten it down a little bit more. Now, you shouldn't be leveling with your jacks, by the way. Here's a pro tip from your Uncle Josh. You don't level the RV with your corner stabilizer jacks. Only an auto leveling system can do that. This is a stabilizer jack because it only stabilizes. You level side to side with tires by putting like blocks or boards under them. You level front to back with the tongue jack. That's true of a fifth wheel, of a travel trailer, of a whatever. Anyway, here's a quick note though on the Wildwood Jacks. They have an option for power stabilizer jacks. It costs more money, naturally. So you're thinking it's gotta be better, right? I don't know. It 
could be argued that it's easier because you just push a button, but uh, we're gonna circle back on that one. The thing is, power stabilizer jacks are not typically rated for as much weight as a manual stabilizer jack. It really is still kind of baffling to me to this day that that's a fact. Um, and when you get the power stabilizer jacks, you are losing the strong arm stabilizer bars with the with that option. So between the loss of stability from going from the manual to power jack organically, and then the loss of the strong arm bar, you've lost a great deal of your campsite stability. And that is really the main reason you don't find a lot of power stabilizers on Wildwoods at Halo RV. Now, again, it goes back to the question of, yeah, but isn't a power jack easier to operate? Wildwood gives us an easy way around that. Because all these Wildwoods are shipping with this handy little hex nut adapter that you can just plug into like a little 12 or 18 volt drill. And this is what we kind of tongue in cheek call the cordless jack system with the Wildwoods. And the thing is, it a drill is something that I highly recommend you have in your camping kit regardless. There's rarely a trip that goes by that I don't find some kind of use for it. Uh, one time I actually took some hangers and kind of wound it up around this thing and made like an automatic bubble spinner shooter outer for my kid, but it uh, it fell apart. So we never ended up trying to patent that. But anyway, it worked for about five seconds. <laughs> my point is though, this thing right here and the stabilizer jack leg bars there, those banana yellow jobs, I personally feel are the better option to for more people to give you more stability but I don't know that it's as obvious. And that's why I like to put these videos together to give you that kind of extra insight from a person who not just sees these things every day, but I also go camping too. So it's the way that I look at them as an owner. Now, speaking of baggage doors and exterior storage, something Jayco does that's really cool is their key alike system. So that uh, baggage door lock and our main entry door lock back here, they're the same key. You don't have to walk around with like my keys that I have all over the place all the time. It's 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 just a lot simpler and easier. Um, the uh, they they're still using like a traditional plastic holdback, so this isn't exactly one hand friendly. And if we look down in here, you can see there's a really nice amount of storage space. And I do like they're using the same extra large baggage door on both sides of the trailer. Now, by contrast. Wildwood isn't using a Kia-like system, but they are using magnet holdbacks, so it just doesn't get much easier than that. Additionally, I'm gonna give the nod to them on storage capacity. I do think they have a larger cubic foot of pass-through storage. Now, they don't use quite as large of a door on the opposite side, but it is still a full true pass-through and you can still get through it. So which one has the advantage? I think it's a wash. I think they are each doing cool things that the other one's not. Entry doors on a J flight, fling right shut, but notice that they do have that kind of frosty glass window in them for a little bit of extra light. Wildwood entry doors, friction hinged. They don't slam, but they also don't have a window. Advantage, neither of them. It's a wash. They're each doing something else that the other's not. Couple other little odds and ends. J flights can get these really sweet looking aluminum wheels. They also have little Jayco Bluebird uh, emblazoned right on the end of that uh, Easy Lube hub cap right there. Now Wildwood doesn't use aluminum wheels, but they use this really slick looking coated mag wheel kind of thing that frankly I think fits the color palette of the exterior of a Wildwood better than an aluminum wheel would. I like that shiny aluminum silver with the J flights. I like that mag look over here at the Wildwood. And one more little thing, Wildwood does include a 12 volt battery disconnect switch right up here on the tongue, which you could add to a J flight, but once again, it is nice that it's right here from the factory. So as you're kind of seeing, they're each doing some really cool things and they're each doing some things that the other one doesn't. That's why I want to put this footage together because I think they're both dynamite, but I don't know that there's always a clear winner top inside and maybe one will kind of present itself to you. Now let's talk decors for a second, just like color palettes and things like that. Now this is something that once again is very subjective. I am going to give a little nod to J Flight because they offer two decors and not one and they're drastically different. 
Like right here, we're looking at the J-Flight Modern Farmhouse decor. But if you're not into all the whites and grays, they do have a thing, uh, it's called cashmere, I, I think, so I can't remember. I can't remember the name, because some of the new Jayco's have cashmere cottage, some have vintage washed gray, and I get a mix up. But basically, they do also still offer like a traditional brownish decor. So if this quite ain't your speed, they still have an option for you. And the thing is, I don't think this Wildwood looks bad by any stretch of the imagination. Frankly, I think it looks pretty good. And it's interesting because the Wildwood color palette here, it's almost this like hybrid amalgamation of the two Jayco color palettes. Now, I don't think that was like intentional. I think it's just kind of a thing that happened. Um, quick other notes here, like up top, they're both a six foot nine ceiling. Um, they both have a standard 13,500 BTU roof air. They both have the option of going to a 15,000 BTU roof air. Uh, they both have options in, in specific models for things like uh, 50 amp service and dual air. So in that regard, they are a complete wash. Um, count the number of lights here on the ceiling for when we jump back to a J flight. You will see that J flights have more lights per square foot, but are you telling me it's not light enough and bright enough in here? And that's one of the reasons they don't tint their windows in these Wildwoods. Windows and lights are very, very expensive. And if a manufacturer can save you some money there, they can give you some awesome features in some other ways. Now, I get that you're like, yeah, but I, I feel like I'm losing privacy. I feel like uh, the sun is going to bake me to death. Well, the good news is Wildwood has these straight block the sun shades back here. Um, and they will, now, now the J-Flights you'll see have some very nice uh, black pleated shades that do a great job of blocking the sun, especially in, compare, uh, in conjunction, not comparison, with their uh, tinted windows. But, I mean, if we want to block the sun out, take a look at this. Now, here's another thing that you can't easily see. The back side of this is a light bright color that is to help reflect sunlight. So when I do want to keep the sunshine out of this thing, when I am trying to keep myself from... Uh, you know, becoming baked and crispy, I can do that very effectively in a Wildwood. So, thing is, Wildwood's either sort of like all or nothing, or as a J Flight gives you a little bit all the time, and then you can get a little bit more, but never quite as much. Which one's better on the windows? I don't know. Which one's better in the decor? I don't know. What do you think? You're the one buying the thing. Uh, it's probably your opinion that matters more anyway. Now, let's talk furniture real quick. This one's tricky. This one's really tricky. In a J-Flight, you're going to get very traditional sofa, dinette, maybe a couple recliners. Uh, depends on the model. Like this one, we happen to have a couple recliners right here. Um, uh, Wildwood, you could very easily say, traditionally has like a jackknife sofa, uh, has a dinette. Maybe the floor plan has a couple recliners. So they're both kind of a wash in that regard. Thing is, J-Flight kind of gives you more options from the factory, but Wildwood gives you more options at the campsite. And I think you'll see what I mean here. So what we're looking at here, J Flight has this really nice, uh, like our, our dinette. It has a free floating base over here. So you can move that thing around. You can use it for picnic time. You could slide the table over here in front of the sofa, have a dinofa. You could pull the recliners in front of it if the floor plan allows and have like a whole full on family party station. You could take the table outside. It's very functional that way. Uh, the U-Dinettes do the same thing. Now, what we're looking at here is a tri-fold sleeper sofa upgrade. Now, that will be a lot cushier. It'll be a little, like, softer to sit on. Thing is, the Wildwood seat, well, it's it, it's not a slouch, which, <laughs> slouch seat, <laughs> not intended. <laughs> so, Wildwood does this thing over here called the Versa Lounge, which I love mutant hybrid words like that. But... Um, if you're looking like this over here is a traditional kind of jackknife uh, sofa segment. This over here would be our dinette. Now it's a U dinette section, but you notice how the back side of this dinette can flip around. So if you want to maintain like a little mini table corner workstation, whatever you want to call it, but you also want to get a bigger open lounge seating space. The only thing this Versa Lounge does is everything. I'm I'm a big fan of it. And the moment I saw it, it instantly catapulted Wildwood up on my personal list where like, if I was looking for an RV today, I was like, that's hard to pass up. So J-Flight gives us more options from the factory. Wildwood gives us more options on the campsite. Now there's tons of storage below this. 
I'm not going to do a full on um, Versa Lounge like demonstration right now. I've done that in a different video. And if I forget, try to remind me. I'll, I'll try to leave a little link down in the video description or the comments or something so you can take a look at that. But I spend like five minutes tearing this thing apart, putting it in all of its different variant forms because it is very cool. It only does everything. Like it can just become one giant sleeper. It's awesome. So jumping over to the kitchen, um, being that they're both six foot nine tall, they're both really good about putting shelving in the overhead cabinets. I do want to take a moment to discuss a difference in cabinet construction. A J Flight has pocket screwed cabinetry. If you come back here to the cabinet style, if you feel back here, you can feel where the J Flight is screwed together. Wildwood has the exact same lumber core material, but it is uh, using a double stapled fastener. People hear staple cabinetry, and in your head, what you're thinking is like the swing line stapler that you have sitting on your desk. This is not that. Um, Jayco, years and years ago, used to use staple cabinetry. They've since moved away from it. And on paper, again, the peace of mind of the Jayco kind of reigns supreme. If, if I'm looking for feel good and function, it's definitely I give the nod to Jayco. But what's tricky is I've been doing this for 12 years now. I've camped for longer than that. I've seen, I've seen more used RVs than you probably. If, I mean, I'm not trying to, to be a jerk, but I mean like my resume in that regard goes probably deeper than yours. It is exceptionally uncommon to have a cabinet fall apart regardless of the fastener type. Go on a used RV lot and find a 97 Mallard by Fleetwood. It ain't falling apart, it's crazy. And their cabinets are built just like this. This works just fine. The staple cabinetry works just fine. Pocket screwed feels better. In theory, it should definitely hold together better, longer, stronger going down the road. But the difference between theory and practice just sometimes isn't always there in actual practice. Funny thing about that. Anyway, moving on from there. Refrigerator. You like these 12 volt compressor fridges? If you do, you can thank Wildwood. They were the first mainstream manufacturer to offer these things. They standard, and they were the first to do this, have a 10.7 cubic foot 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Cools fast, bigger capacity, awesome travel function, does not have to be level to operate. These things are absolutely great. Um, the countertops through the entire kitchen of a Wildwood are going to be a sealed edge thermofoil. Now, where that, that's true also in a J Flight, where Wildwood kind of pulls ahead is like the tabletop, the bathroom counter, other things and a Wildwood will also be a sealed edge press membrane. Catalina was the first in this class to do that, Cherokee followed suit after, and now Wildwood's doing the same thing, and I'm very happy for it. You can see how they have um, the high-rise kind of sprayer faucet, flush mount sink, um, and they do a single roll-away drying rack on the sink. I will tell you, if I, could, if I could do one thing, if I could offer one change to a Wildwood, I would just either put in two of those or do one extra long one to give me like a full sink cover. But our J Flight kitchen is not a slouch. Again, in the kitchen, we're still getting that same sealed edge press membrane thermal foil counter. You see how they are uh, recessing their sink as well, but they are giving us dual sink covers, one dish drying rack like the Wildwood, but then a bonus like cutting board style. Now, J Flight gives us two options on refrigerators. Standard is an eight cubic foot two-way fridge. So if you're gonna be off grid for an extended period of time, you don't wanna worry about solar and batteries, that propane side of that fridge is going to be awesome. They, I mean, obviously offer, as we're seeing right here, a 12 volt DC compressor fridge. Now, both of them are the same size. Uh, both of them, it, when I say both, I don't mean the two Jayco refrigerators. I mean the Wildwood versus the J Flight uh, 12 volt fridge for clarity's sake. They're the same size. They both do have a way to turn off. It's a little more obvious and easy on the J Flight. Um, so uh, Jayco gives you a few more options. I think this is really becoming, especially here in the Midwest, this is becoming the dominant thing. So I'm going to kind of call that a wash since you're mostly going to see the DC fridge anyway. But if you are looking for options, Jayco does kind of nudge it out in that way. Um, something else I want to point out here is this huge like countertop to cabinet bottom backsplash. That rocks, and I love that Jayco's doing that. And then down below, something I forgot to talk about in the Wildwood. Plywood drawers down to the floor. And there's four of them, count them up. So what's Wildwood doing? Well, similarly, we are getting a very nice countertop to cabinet bottom backsplash. Now it's heavily occupied by a big window in this model, but we are asking about drawers as well. 
they do their drawers a little bit different on a few different models. In this one, you see how we have triple drawers. They are plywood, which is nice. Um, they are drawers inside of a door though. That isn't usually seen as the preferable option for a consumer. Then again, it doesn't stop me from camping. I don't see any problems with it necessarily, but um, they don't do this all of the time. So this is kind of model specific. Sometimes they do it, sometimes they don't. It kind of just depends. Now for entertainment stuff, they're both ready for TVs. Neither includes a TV standard. Um, they both have a Bluetooth system with an HDMI input. Wildwood just gives us this big sound bar and Wildwood is very consistent about offering fireplaces. Fireplaces are basically standard. And if you're not familiar, they're not a fireplace. It's basically a, a electric space heater that we call a fireplace. And someone's like, I don't care. I don't care about all that extra heat. You can turn it on just light mode and get a cool night light or just a daytime visual effect out of it as well. By contrast, the Jayco's here get a little bit of a nod in that they're not just AM, FM, and Bluetooth with an HDMI input. They do also still maintain the use of a DVD system. Some people are going to say, oh, that's old, outdated technology. A lot of people, why don't they have Blu-ray? Well, Blu-ray just never really caught on mainstream because so many people went streaming media. That's why they include that HDMI port, so you can expand that if you want to. Now, a neat thing with Jayco is they do actually run HDMI wiring, where a lot of brands don't. But you might notice a lack of fireplace in some of the J flights. Fireplaces are typically optional in J flight. They are standard in a Wildwood. Um, I tend to put in a lot of fireplaces here at Halid RV, but they're just not offered in every floor plan every time. So again, they're each doing a little thing the other isn't. The bathrooms for me are pretty much a wash. Again, they're each gonna do that one thing that the other doesn't. They each kind of have a way of making up for it, but neither really completely does the thing uh, that the other does out of the box. Anyway, what I'm getting at, they're both six foot nine campers. That means a big tall goofball like me can stand in the shower without my head hitting the ceiling. J Flight's standard have a skylight. Wildwoods do not. That is actually an optional piece of equipment. You will find that our Wildwoods here are gonna have that skylight 10 times out of 10, barring something really wacky and unforeseen. Um, I won't even get into the details of what and why. Now, the shower. We happen to be looking at a nice, pretty glass-enclosed shower on this Jayco here, but uh, the showers used in Wildwoods and J-Flights will each vary a little bit depending on the specific floor plan. Quick note for you that J-Flight also is using a porcelain bowl on their foot flush stool. And a door that actually locks. Woo! A Wildwoods bathroom door might not lock. And they might be using more of a traditional plastic stool, but these are two very easy things to be remedied. I'll give J-Flight the nod in those things, obviously, since they don't require extra work, but I don't know that they're that big of a deal. What is interesting is on your Wildwood, you always have a shower. They got away from tubs completely. Now, I know that's going to really kind of throw some people because uh, a lot of people say, well, if it's a bunkhouse, don't I, I, I need a, uh, a tub? Well, RVs don't really hold a ton of water. Um, I don't know that a tub necessarily gives you a great amount of benefit. There's nothing really like, well, what if you gotta wash like a baby? Okay, well, you don't like fill a tub to wash a baby. They usually sit on one of those little foam jobs and you take the little hose and you kind of spray them down gently as you're, uh, you know, uh, cleaning them. Um, you can do the same thing in the shower that you could do in that tub. Uh, one thing that I really do like about uh, the Wildwood bathrooms, though, is that, remember, they have that sealed edge membrane countertop all the way through. I think the J-Flight sink hardware is a little bit cooler looking, a little bit fancier. But, again, it's we're really splitting hairs difference between the two. They both, neither has anything that's going to stop me from camping. And they both have a lot of things that I would really want, but neither has the exact same mixture of features that the other has. That's what's so crazy about these two brands. Now the following can be a little bit, not a little bit, very floor plan dependent. Um, if we're talking bunks, not couples campers, uh, Jayco uses like twice as thick bunk mats and typically their bunk ratings in a J flight will always meet and typically exceed the weight ratings in a Wildwood. However, Wildwood bunk rooms tend to be 
more creative, more functional, um, more innovative. Like they've got their Versa bunk. They've got different options for different things that Jayco just doesn't really offer in a lot of their bunk rooms. So there's no real clear winner there. And it's not like I think the heavier weight ratings in a J Flight um, uh, are going to make or break my camping experience again. A lot of it, once again, boils down to um, feature and function versus feeling and peace of mind. Now the bedroom here, once again, I'm, I don't feel there's a clear winner between the two. And really this, these comparison videos I've been doing, they've been very enlightening to me because there's been several times where I've walked up to one, I'm like, that's gonna blow the other one out of the water. And then I really get really diving into it like this. And I find how torn and conflicted I am with a high level of frequency. And I guess it makes sense. That's why both of these brands are both really popular. That's why they both really compete well with one another. And once again, I'm just really glad that we have them both here. So it's sort of like asking, do you want an iPhone or an Android? It's like asking, do you want the greatest or the best? They're both awesome. They both have a couple tweaks, but they're both really great. Anyway, um, bedroom. Wildwood, once again, is very creative and innovative. They are fantastic at making very few dollars have a very big impact on your camping experience. Like over here, they got these CPAP side stands built right in their closet. You see that little cutaway back there? There's a set of household outlets inside of there. So you have household and USBs on both sides of the bed. And it's a dream for CPAP users, but frankly, I'd keep my phone charger in there. Um, a concept someone has presented to me that I think is, it. it I'm, not, I'm neither supporting nor degrading nor anything. As someone said, well, I could uh, keep my little um, gun safe in there, small little portable uh, gun safe I could get mounted in there somehow, and that'd make me feel better that I could reach in there and have access to that. Some people are really going to have issue with that. I am not here to debate the benefits or detriments one way or the other, nor will I tolerate any nastiness in the comments about that. I'm just saying what well, you can use this for different purposes is really what I'm getting at. Now, quick note on the bedding, Wildwoods, you're going to always have a camp queen. That is the short queen. But if you're noticing, if I get my chubby dad bod out of the way, there's plenty of room down here. Funny thing, if you look at the history of Wildwoods, they used to have this really blunt, blocky front nose. Well, they went to this smooth radius sweep that you're seeing up here. And when they did that, accidentally, unintentionally, the head of the bed got sucked forward. And that created the extra space here at the foot of the bed. So these are all camp queens, but they are all true queen capable, which I think is a, a really cool feature that they're doing there. Now, they've got one other neat little feature, and that's down here below the bed. If I lift that up, you can see how it's all plywood decked. It's easy lift, it gets right out of the way. Not to mention the fact that they include more of these storage totes here, which is something that you find a lot of in the Versa Lounge. So, once again, when it comes to innovation, Wildwood's become really tough to beat. But J Flight also has several what I would consider potential deal breaker factors factored into their bedroom as well. One of the main ones here is uh, the, the bedding. J Flights are uh, exceptionally uncommon within their class. That is a 60 by 80 true queen. Um, stick and tin campers almost never have a true queen bed. Many brands like Catalina, Cherokee, uh, Wildwood, obviously, they'll leave you the option of upgrading to a true queen. J Flight has a standard true queen right out of the gate. So you don't have to choose walk around space around the foot of the bed or uh, a true queen. Now again, Wildwood does leave your room if you upgrade to a true queen, you can still walk around pretty well, but you do have to upgrade it. Um, J Flight also is now offering a king bed option. And I've been asking this a lot lately and I'll continue to ask it because I'm still conflicted on it. Like if you're looking at this, you see the side stands on either side of the bed. They're a little bit thinner. They're a little bit um, sunken back. Well, uh, there's also a, a gap over here beside the mattress. The idea there is that if you wanted to, this can be built with a 70 by 80 king. Um, you're gonna give up some some walk around the side space. Makes it a little harder to make the bed. 
but you're getting more sleeping space. So you spend three minutes making the bed, you spend eight hours sleeping in it, that makes sense to me. And were this like, you know, like a cougar, an eagle, or something like that, king bed absolutely feels right to me. In this class, considering a true queen is already better than what anyone else is offering, I don't know that the king option is the best here, but here's the reason I like leaving the queens in these J flights, and tell me if I'm wrong. Because they left the space over here on the side stand, because they didn't build the cabinet right up next to the queen bed, any time, not from the factory, but any time after the fact, you could swap up to a king bed. Now, if there's one thing we all know about the RV industry, it's that um, these beds are awesome, right? Well, obviously I'm being a little bit facetious, but um, I feel like I'm in high school talking on the phone, just laying on my bed here like this. But um, what I'm getting at is there's no right bed for any person. There's no right firmness. There's no right thickness. So RV manufacturers basically have to use kind of crappy bedding. Now this sort of queen that I'm laying on in this J-Flight, actually I could, I'd get along on a weekend just fine on this. I think a lot of people are still going to um, upgrade and put like a little at least foam topper on it, which is really like the general, I think, accepted solution for more uh, camping arrangements. But um, manufacturers never spend a lot of money on bedding because they can never do it right. My wife and I have a sleep number. Our sleep number is about 35 units different. There is no one mattress that could ever fit both of us. That is not an uncommon situation between couples in various households. So uh, I think manufacturers just don't spend too much money on a mattress and they let you save that money and get your own. Now, some people say, why don't they put no mattress in? And I've gone way off topic here, obviously, but um, they say, why don't they put no mattress in? Because if they did that, folks like yourselves would say, well, look at these cheap corner cutters. Wonder what else they didn't do. They have to have even a back-breaking wafer of death placeholder mattress in there. Otherwise, they're just going to get their heads taken off. Neat thing here, uh, another little benefit to the Jayco's is they do have um, like trim all the way around their windows, which gives those pleated nightshades something to bite into. And I'm realizing, actually, you haven't seen that yet. And now you have. And like I said, I really walked into this. I don't know why. And I didn't have one in my head that I thought was like going to win. But I felt like when I was done, I was going to have a clear winner in my head. And as I went through this video, I'm thinking in my head the, as I'm speaking, wow, uh, this guy's really not going to like what I just said about his brand. Or this guy's not going to like what I just said about his brand. And the thing is, I had that happen a bunch. And if I have that happen, I feel like I'm doing a good job of being very fair between the two products. Did I do a good job? Let me know. What do you like about these RVs? What do you wish you could see differently? What else would you like me to compare? Right now my comparisons are basically limited to the fact that I don't have all of the RVs in stock that I would normally like to. Eventually, I will probably make a Wildwood versus J Fly versus Catalina versus Cherokee head to head to head to head video. But for now, this is what I have. And I hope you appreciate the effort and the time. It takes a ton of time to put this stuff together, folks. So like if you're watching 20 minutes of video, it took me at least three times that to put all this together. So you appreciate the effort. Give our team here the opportunity to work with you. Uh, hit the subscribe button, follow along with us here at Halet RV. And as always, take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy camping, everyone.